War is a racket. It always has been. It is possibly the oldest, easily the most profitable, surely the most vicious. It is the only one international in scope. It is the only one in which the profits are reckoned in dollars and the losses in lives. Who is going to win in Ukraine? Ukraine is left a ruin, Russia and its economy is going to be in shambles for many years to come, with or without the territory it has conquered. Europeans are caught in the middle, overpaying for their electricity and food. With each passing day, their economies become less competitive. There is only one victor, with this victory not even requiring a single soldier stepping onto the soil of Ukraine. Under a veneer of altruism and a display of care for its European counterparts, the Biden administration has played its cards perfectly, giving it the opportunity to once again emerge as the preeminent global superpower. The arsenal of democracy has been deployed in full. Liquefied natural gas, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, Boeing, and even the expansive cornfields of the Midwest. Ever since Reagan, the United States has had a dream of cutting Europe off from Russian gas, placing enormous pressure on the development of Nord Stream pipelines. But now, Washington has pledged to supply an additional 15 billion cubic meters of liquefied natural gas to European markets by 2022. US-based LNG producers can come in as saving grace, reaping incredible rewards from desperate European entities. But if we rewind back to just 2019, same producers had to worry about competition from both Russia and the likes of Qatar, which greatly ate into any profits. In the first half of 2022, total LNG exports rose by some 20%, most of the increase going to Europe. As a result, an LNG revolution is taking place in the Gulf of Mexico, Louisiana, Texas and Florida. America currently only has 7 LNG export terminals, but the total number of these terminals is set to at least double, with many approved and under construction. Each conflict has its defining weapon, such as a Spitfire for the Second World War and the B-52 in Vietnam. In Ukraine, it is the HIMARS, GPS-guided missiles that can hit targets located 70 kilometers away, produced by none other than Lockheed Martin, and the Javelin missile launchers with a range up to 2,500 meters, stopping Russian armor in its tracks, produced by Raytheon and Lockheed Martin. The impacts of Putin's invasion have created a massive surge in demand, not only from Ukraine, but also many nervous European countries who are looking down the barrel of an irrational dictator. Germany announced its desire to buy up to 35 F-35 fighter jets from Lockheed Martin. The Royal Navy will invest 300 million to increase the capabilities of its Tomahawk missiles. The Netherlands has put 1 billion on the table for Patriot medium range missile defense systems. Estonia ordered six HIMARS systems, and Bulgaria decided in September to further increase its order for F-16 fighter jets for an amount of 1.3 billion. This all of course comes at the expense of local European arms industries, which largely miss out on lucrative contracts, not just in regards to manufacturing, but also maintenance. An interesting example is the Swedish fighter. JS-39 Gripen, produced by Saab, designed to reduce the effectiveness of the radars used by Russia's jets and surface-to-air missile systems. Developed in the 1980s, the Gripen was designed to operate with as little infrastructure as possible, effectively capable of launching from highways. In addition, a number of reports have shown the Gripen as having significantly lower operational costs compared to the jets such as the F-16 and the F-18. But instead, the Ukrainian Air Force is already being trained for the possibility of receiving F-16s. And while European industry gets shafted, Uncle Sam needs to increase capacity in order to have any chance of meeting demand. Similar to LNG producers, the farmers of America's Midwest have always had to contend with hard competition in the European market. Ukraine exported some 31.5 million tons of corn between 2021 and 22. By comparison, US exported some 63.5 million tons. Close to a quarter of the corn consumed on the European continent is grown outside the borders of the EU, particularly in Ukraine. 
which has become Europe's leading supplier over the years. With the ongoing conflict, the country's production could be cut by as much as 15 tonnes a year. As a result, European buyers have unmet demand and need to look elsewhere. In comes the United States, which has a very large corn production capacity. This strength has not only enabled them to serve their domestic market, but also to take over from Russia and Ukraine and export widely to other countries. And with the energy crisis sweeping Europe, whole sectors are simply no longer profitable or competitive, meaning that many businesses will have no option but to move elsewhere. Places like Oklahoma, perhaps. The governor of Oklahoma wrote an article in a German business newspaper, Handelsblatt, mentioning wages which are up to 40% lower than in California and the unbeatable energy costs, permanently two or three times lower than in Europe. This may lead to a wave of mass industrial relocation. All in all, this is an extraordinary quick reversal of the narrative, which previous administrations had to contend with. China is not taking over. In fact, it's going through extraordinary economic challenges, which will be massively exacerbated by its lopsided population pyramid. Russia has conclusively proven that it is no longer a great power, and the longer the fighting prolongs in Ukraine, the more prosperous the US will become, and the closer NATO draws to its borders. The opponents of the West have essentially defeated themselves, either with draconian and backwards economic policies, or with disastrous strategic blunders. And for the most part, this incredible reversal of fortune can be attributed to just one man. Almost makes me wonder, is Putin really on the side of Russia? War against a foreign country only happens when the money classes think they're going to profit from it. Next, learn why North Korea would be willing to provide Russia with guns. Click here, and this is my Patreon map. Everyone here is either currently or has at some point provided significant support for my channel, and I'm most grateful. Geoperspective, out.